Okay, I should be in bed right now. I really should, but I'm going to knock this out very quickly. There's a viewer who keeps asking me why I don't like Scooby-Doo. What is it about I don't like about Scooby-Doo? Okay, first of all, if you like Scooby-Doo, great, good for you. Enjoy it. Have fun with it. I that's that's your prerogative. There is one episode of Scooby-Doo I like, and it's the one that Harlan Ellison was on, and it's because Harlan Ellison was on it, not because I like Scooby-Doo. But here's the thing. Okay. First of all, I know that there have been movies and there have been um, uh, reboots of the series that I have not watched, except for the obvious episode. There's the Velma series that absolutely nobody is enjoying, but got a second season somehow. Well, it got a second season because the uh, the second season is actually just the second half of the um, or the run of uh, initial run of episodes the HBO ordered. That's the only reason it got a second a second season. They had already produced them. But anyway, so the whole thing about Scooby Doo. Here's the thing. Now I'm talking about. I grew up with the original Scooby Doo, uh, and. <clears throat> I'm, I'm an old person, and I grew up with the original Scooby-Doo. That's all I've seen. That's all I'm talking about. I lost interest back then, and I don't care to rekindle uh, an interest. I don't, I don't need to hear about how great the new series are or anything. I really don't care. There's, there's lots of other magical, wonderful things out there for me to enjoy, uh, and if you enjoy it, fine. But here's why I don't like Scooby-Doo. Okay. So Hanna-Barbera did a lot of really great stuff, uh, a lot of stuff that's still really cool and really holds up today. They gave us the Flintstones, they gave us the Jetsons. For those two things alone, they are to be commended, but they gave us so many other great series as well. And, uh, you know, Yogi Bear and uh, on and on it goes. I mean, so many iconic classic characters. Now, the thing is, as, mu as great as Hanna-Barbera was, the problem is, if you watch their, you know, back in the back in the day, when all we had was appointment viewing, you could only watch these shows when they were on TV, and so you know that all of these shows were in syndication by the time I was watching them. But if you know Scooby Doo came on at three o'clock in the afternoon, you could only see it at three o'clock in the afternoon. And I bring that up because if you put time between the episodes. Uh, you don't notice. You're, if you're young, you're a child, and you put time between the episodes, you don't notice uh, continuities uh, as much. And Hanna-Barbera was very much banking on that. They were a very low-budget production company, uh, despite having a lot of um, great prof uh, properties, uh, properties that were very successful. One of the things they did was find tons and tons of ways to save money cutting corners everywhere they could. That's why if you watch anything in Hanna-Barbera that has like a car going fast or somebody running fast, the background that's going by uh, behind them is the same thing, the same image being looped continuously. And it's just going so fast that you don't see it. So Hanna-Barbera was doing all kinds of stuff like that all the time. And what they would do was find uh, ways to reuse existing animation. Uh, one of those things they would do is bank on recurring jokes throughout their the episodes so that they could reuse animation, the same animation. This is why we always have uh, Shaggy and Scooby getting scared and Shaggy uh, shouts Zoink Scoob and they turn and run uh, in one direction. Why are they, you know, why are Shaggy and Scooby always walking the same direction when they're, when, you know, when they, they split up? Why is it always Fred, uh, Fred goes off with Daphne and Velma, and Shaggy goes off with Scooby. You know, because these are the the uh, animation stills that they had on hand, and <clears throat> consequently, um, they just got it is it is so over and over again repetitious. So many things. There's over and over and over again are reused and redone to the point that if you watch that, uh, <clears throat> if you watch the series with any degree of regularity, you'll start to notice that. And I'm, again, I'm not talking about <clears throat> rebooted stuff now where they have big budgets to get behind it and everything. I'm talking about the original classic series. They keep doing the same things over and over again. And the problem is, it's it, it again, it, it gets to be so obvious, you know, 
it's hard to be surprised that something, you know, that a wall, a, a part of the brick wall behind Shaggy and Scooby is going to open up and jerk them back into, you know, jerk them into some other room when we see a part of the wall that is a different color, a different shade of the same color as the rest of the bricks on the wall. We know what's about to happen. We know what's about to open up. And again, they were so stuck on cutting so many corners that they it literally gets down to just them making the same episode over and over again and it's so formulaic so much even just to so with different characters where they can use the same motion capture why is it always you know we're you know it's old man so and so behind the mask let's see who this is after all you know, and again, the problem is when that's what's happening over and over again, even as a child, I'm sitting there watching it and thinking, just once, just once, could the gang look at the situation at hand, not assume that it's a supernatural occurrence, and uh, and have to, and, and just say, you know what, whatever this is, it's probably the grouchy you know, land, landscaper or the grouchy janitor or the grouchy old man or the grouchy whatever that we introduced when we introduced all of the uh, episode-specific characters. Yeah, that guy that's always crotchety and complaining, he's always the villain. We always know who the villain is. It's the same goddamn episode over and over again. And just once you... Know, um, um, What's his name? Tim Minchin has this whole routine that he does talking about, uh, you know, his atheistic worldview and everything and uh, his, his atheistic worldview and how he loves the show Scooby-Doo because every, in every episode, uh, rationality wins. We don't rely on, you know, it's never supernatural. The gang always concludes that it's... Uh, that, that it's something to do with, uh, the gang always concludes that it's a, a secular answer. Rationality always wins instead of the supernatural. No, that never happens. They always start out thinking that there must be something to it. Shaggy and Scooby never, uh, Shaggy and Scooby always get scared of the ghost. They never stop to think, hey, it's never been supernatural before. Why would it be supernatural now? It, all of that. And then on top of that, I mean, just on top of the unbelievable, just noxious levels of predictability, the other thing is just that it is such, to me, it, 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 it's, it is such a just unwatchably campy show, you know? Um, there, there are shows I can remember being a kid and like watching cartoons and like when when like adults would come into the room uh other you know like my parents friends and stuff would come in the room i'd get like embarrassed because i i knew i was watching stupid cringy stuff they're not obviously not paying attention to what i'm watching at all but i would get embarrassed and it's like it's one of those shows it's just like i feel embarrassed just listening to these characters and in every iteration that they've done I've always felt that way where the one of the few clips I saw from one of the Scooby-Doo movies is where one of the characters says your name means Scoopy Poo and it's like ah! just everything they say just feels like razor blades down my spine I mean it's just it, it's just painfully campy in the episodes where they do music and they sing and of course it's the same animations every time because they're reusing everything like it is just the most one-dimensional predictable formulaic campy asinine show i have ever seen uh and you know it it simply cannot compare to the brilliance of the flintstones to the brilliance of uh, of uh, the Jetsons, both of which satirized modern modern life in different uh, different ways and fascinating ways, it cannot hold a candle to um, you know the aforementioned Yogi Bear, uh, which had actual comic timing to it and all that. It's just it is just the same thing over and over again and it's not an interesting same thing over and over again so 
you know, the, um, and, and I, I'm aware, you know, I get that obviously, you know, you're, you're going to say, well, Shaggy and Scooby, no, or the joke is that Shaggy and Scooby never figure it out because they're always stoned and that's why they're always think, well, okay, then that's the reason it's the same thing every time. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's just not, not that appealing. Uh, not that or not not that interesting it's incredibly predictable i mean one it, it might have worked for one episode but then they need to do something different the formula is just too obvious and again like i said i don't and and then the characters i find the characters insufferable like every single one of them gets on my nerves and um that's that's why part of why that Velma show, I've, I've seen bits of it, but obviously that was, people were gonna get pissed off about that because it's like, you have these characters that are just great, I mean, it, I, for me, these characters just great on my nerves, and now you're going to do obnoxiously overblown versions of the exact character traits that get on my nerves. So anyway, that's why I can't stand Scooby-Doo. I don't watch it. I have no interest in watching it. And um, if you if you like it, that's great. But I honestly do not see what's so good about it. And I never have. I don't think it holds up to uh, other Hanna-Barbera cartoons from the time. I don't think it holds up to um, other cartoons from other companies at the time. It sure as hell does not hold up to the brilliance of the Chuck Jones Looney Tunes cartoons or the Bill Melendez, Lee Mendelson, uh, Charles Schultz um, peanut specials or anything like that. It just, it has no soul, it has no heart, it has no passion. It's just a, a one note, one trick pony that has been around way too long.